Hi! In this lesson, you will learn different ways to position graphics objects. As your graphical designs become more complex, we need additional ways to create, customize, and add shapes to the canvas more dynamically. Rather than keeping track and updating dimensions and positions and variables, there are useful functions that provide the dimensions of the canvas and objects for us. There are two useful functions that return the dimensions of the canvas. The getWidth function returns the width of the canvas. If the canvas is 400 pixels wide, the getWidth function returns 400. The getHeight function returns the height of the canvas. If the canvas is 480 pixels in height, the getHeight function returns 480. These measurements are particularly useful for setting the position of a shape relative to the width and height of the canvas and to make the code reusable. For example, to position a circle at the center of a canvas, the x and y coordinates for the position of a shape can be set to get width divided by 2 and get height divided by 2 to position the shape at the center of the width and the center of the height, therefore in the center of the canvas. We can also use get width and get height to set the sizes of shapes. For example, if we wanted to cover the top third of the canvas, we could draw a rectangle. We could set the width of the rectangle to the width of the canvas using the return value of get width. And we can set the height of the rectangle to get height divided by 3. We can also get the dimension of objects. For rectangles, text, and images, we can get the width by writing the name of the variable storing the object, dot get width parentheses. To get the height, we write the name of the variable storing the object, dot get height parentheses. We can also get the radius of a circle by writing the name of the variable storing the circle, dot get radius in parentheses. Let's see some examples of this in the editor. Using what we just learned, let's create an eight ball. So let's call our first function, draw a pool ball. First, we need to draw a circle. Next, let's set the position. We can use the get width and get height functions. And let's set the color of the ball to black. And lastly, we add the ball to the canvas. When we run the code, we see a black circle at the center of the canvas. Let's create a function called draw text. First, we create text. Next, let's position the text to the center of the canvas. Let's try using the get width and get height functions again. Let's set the color. And lastly, we add it to the canvas. When we rerun the code, we see that 8 appears to be almost at the center of the canvas. Let's use debug mode to see what happened. When setting the position of text, we're setting the position of the anchor, which is in the bottom left-hand corner. Instead, we want the center of the width and the center of the height of the text to be positioned at the middle of the circle. So we can do this by first getting the width and the height of the text. Let's store that in two variables. Next, we need to offset the width and height positions here. The width of the text needs to move to the left by half of the width of the text. So we will subtract the text width over two. For the height, we need it to go down by half of the height of the text. So we would add text height over two. Nice. Another thing that we can do to make our code a little bit more readable is create constants. In our code, there's two things that remain constant. The midpoint of the canvas is for both the width and the height. 
instead of using get width over two and get height over two twice in our code, let's create constants and replace those values. So wherever we have get width over two, we would replace that with center x. Similarly, wherever we see get height over two, we substitute that with center y. Because we define our constants at the top of the program, these constants become available for any functions that need them. 